Hello everybody, it's Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today I've got Duncan on my lap, if you can see him here, He's being a little antsy, so I picked him up. And today, I'm actually going to be showing you how to return your Kingrun printer to its factory default firmware using this, this, and a computer. And Duncan wants to eat these. Smell good? Okay, I think he wants to go down. <laughs> a machine that can make copies of almost anything. So, like I said in the intro, we are going to be resetting your printer to the factory default settings. And to do that, uh, if you don't have the original SD card that came with your Kingrun printer, don't worry, we've got a link down below where you can download all the files to paste onto your Kingrun SD card, yada yada. Um, yeah, you just need an SD card reader and a computer and an SD card, and you can do all this. So. To start out, we're going to take the SD card, plug it into the SD card reader. I know, simple stuff, but why not show it on camera? And then we're going to take the SD card reader, plug it into the computer. Now, your computer might actually have an SD card reader in it already, so you might be able to bypass that or just use like the micro SD to regular size SD. Adapter. Um, I just know the slot for that on my laptop is a little fussy, so I prefer to use the uh, USB adapter because it's more stable. So once you plug that all in, you should see either a pop-up or you should see the uh, SD card show up as a USB drive in your computer. So if you didn't get a pop-up like you just saw me get, you should be able to see one, like see the files if you just go to your PC and select USB drive. Um, and then from there, we're going to need these two files in particular, as well as like these two. If you don't, if you're going from a blank SD card, you want pretty much everything on here copied onto it just to be on the safe side. But the ones that we're going to be working with are the Robin Mini and the Robin Mini config. So they're both .cur files, as you can see here. And what that means is it's been compiled and installed on a Kingrun printer, either fully or partially. So if you have already installed it, but you've switched over to Marlin, what you're going to want to do is go and select these, click the file, click the name. It's going to select the actual file name itself. And then what you're going to want to do is select the file type backspace and for the Robin Mini you want to turn this into a .bin file. It's going to pop up here and ask if you want to rename it and make sure that you know what you're doing when you're changing the file name extension. Ideally you would want to have backed up this file beforehand just in case. It never hurts to have a backup. I've actually got a backup on my uh, computer as well as the one that I'm sharing with you guys. So I'm not too worried here, but ideally you would want to have a backup of this file. And we're just going to click yes for changing it. It's going to change here. You'll see the actual icon changes as well. And we're going to do a similar thing for the config file here. So I'm just going to click the name again. And this one we're actually going to change to a .txt file, which means it's a plain text. So there you go. Same thing. And what you can actually do now, if you're a little curious like I know I was when I started out and still am for the most part, you can actually open this up in a text editor. And yeah, there's going to be some characters that you're not going to recognize because font types and whatnot, as well as the fact this isn't official smoothieware. But you're going to see mostly plain text for how your printer is going to be set up. So you can see here the max x y and z are 180 there's the max uh, well there's the steps per millimeter so if you need to calibrate you can always go and change these as you need to and then reinstall the firmware and it'll update so there's that uh, you can see that the board technically supports two extruders you just need to 
I believe you attach like a daughter board to it to do that. I might look into doing that in the future with one of mine. And you can see all like the feed rates and everything and all the fun stuff. If you need to modify anything with your printer, you do it through here. But it's always good to keep a backup of the original. Um, thankfully, I've got a digital copy of it now. Well, it's all digital, but like a cloud copy, I guess, through Google Drive. So I'm not too worried about modifying my copy on the SD card itself. Um, so that about covers it for setting this back. So what you do now is you take the SD card, unplug it from your computer, plug it into your King Room printer, power on the King Room printer, make sure it's not powered on when you insert the SD card, otherwise you're just not going to get anything. It's not going to read the SD card. It needs that power on cycle to actually detect the SD card and install the firmware. So once you power on the printer with the SD card in it, you'll see the little install screen pop up and it's going to go through the progress bar and install everything. So it's pretty self-explanatory from that point. What I'm actually going to show you here is just kind of some of the goodies that come with this SD card because I know some people have asked me questions about like the software and where you can find drivers and stuff like that. Obviously those are both right there, but I'm going to show you a little bit more. So these are the fonts as it kind of hints there with the BAK underscore font. So these are the fonts that the printer uses. They've been compiled into dot bin so that it reads in the printer. And this is actually like the, the uh, pictures, I guess is the best way to describe it. So it's all the icons and different uh, graphics that show up on the display. So there's all the buttons here. I haven't really broken these down, but usually bin is just kind of a, it's either compiled into a bin or it's compressed into a bin. Uh, some compression suites like I think 7-zip will actually unload bin files. Um, you can always try doing it. I personally, I have no real interest in it, but uh, yeah. If you're going to be using your computer to host the printer, you'll want to install your drivers, which are here in the drivers folder. You can do this a few ways. So depending on whether you're running a 32-bit or 64-bit version of Windows, you'll want to click the 32-bit or the 64 um, for the respective ones. If you're not sure if you're running a 64-bit operating system or not, you're going to want to do 32 and it'll work fine. 64-bit OS's as of right now are still, for the most part, backwards compatible with 32-bit, at least on the Windows side. Um, obviously, this is going to be very different if you're doing this on a Mac. You'll probably just need to download the software from Ultimaker because this is just these are all executables that are Windows compatible unless you have a like an emulator or software to kind of interface the executables. So these are the actual uh, system info files that you can use to manually set up your uh, drivers, I guess, so to speak. So you would go through control panel and devices and printers and whatnot and select this. You'd add it in that way. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's a little on the convoluted side and the executable should work fine. If you find that these don't work for you, the, two, uh, the 32 and the 64, you can go up here and you can just click the setup exe in here and it'll do it directly from the driver uh, menu. This is essentially the driver manufacturer's version. It's not like a pre-canned thing. There's also the 64-bit one there. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, software folder has a little, I believe it's a four page leaflet on how to set up the software as well as some basic software operations. Um, so it's got some stuff on like uh, what speeds to set and yada yada. It shows like the standard thing. If you watched my previous video on setting up Cura, you'll be familiar with a lot of these things and won't necessarily need this manual. Uh, here's the actual Cura software that King Rune provides. So it's just Cura 3.7.1, I believe. And that's just been rebadged with the King Rune name on it. Here are the STLs for the G code that came pre compiled on here. So you've got the food clip, 
and the Guardian Extruder and the key ring, which I'm surprised they didn't include the G-code, but I guess it gives you something to try out. So the key ring here, just opening it in uh, Print 3D from Windows or from Microsoft, uh, it's just a basic key ring. So it has the text on here. It uh, is a good test part because it's got these fine little letters here. So if you don't have your nozzle set properly and everything, it could be a good, I don't know, a good way to test how well you have your printer set if it does these fine details. Um, you might actually not get some of these letters depending on uh, the actual dimensions here. I'm not sure the exact dimensions of like the eye. It could be less than 0.4 millimeters, in which case it wouldn't print because your minimum dimension in the XY axis is uh, 0.4 millimeters. Kind of. It's a little tricky, but yeah, for the most part. And then here's the G code that came with everything. And if you've seen the previous video, you'll know that this is like the holy grail for setting up your printer and setting up your software. So if you've never opened up a G code, it's just, uh, it's not plain text per se, but you can just open it with uh, Notepad or WordPad. And you can even open it in Notepad++ if you really want. It's not going to change anything. It's just a, essentially a TXT file that has the G-code header on it. So it's the .gcode. Um, so you can actually look in there. If you're curious how G-code works, it's kind of self-explanatory. There's a bit of text there explaining what stuff does. There's... You can tell here this is all the code for the skirt and you can see the uh, the different coordinates and how it kind of prints out the shape so you could always take a piece of graph paper and like do it manually and you fiddle around with it that way and here's the instructions which I believe we all got uh, a hard copy of this with the printer if you didn't you can print it off this way, or if you didn't get the SD card for some reason, you can download my version from uh, Google Drive, and yeah, you have all this stuff on here. It's all pretty self-explanatory for the most part, um, but if you're brand new to this sort of hobby, then you'll probably find this pretty useful. I just noticed that the, uh, the page numbers down here are backwards it's 14 and 14 14 and 9 that's weird that's a little weird weird detail not sure why I noticed it I guess because it's printed no no I don't see a reason why it's done that way um, I think they just did it backwards uh, but yeah that about covers it for this video I know it's not like super in depth or anything, but hopefully you found some of this informative and hopefully it helps you out. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about here, leave us a comment down below and we'll make sure to answer it for you. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. If you're not subscribed already, your subscription is always appreciated. It's just awesome. And we're going to have some affiliate links down below as well for filament like my personal favorite brand of filament never had an issue with it um, as well as the king rune printer and some other goodies probably um, if you're gonna do some shopping on Amazon it doesn't hurt to click the affiliate link and then go through through there we really appreciate any any purchases done through the affiliate links it just goes a long way to helping the channel grow and continue to provide additional content we want to start branching out and doing cool new things. So, yeah, that covers it for today. I hope you have a great day, and thanks for watching our video. Bye for now.